This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. As uh, Bruce Keeson is coming out. And uh, do I see something that I haven't seen for quite a while? No. Uh, Rimpelmeyer is going down to coach at first, so that's the same. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, before uh, we get things underway and I complete the lineup for you for the Phillies, for our Pirates, let's uh, pause for station identification on the Pirate Baseball Network. All the good sports are on Pirates. <laughs> All right, uh, we told you their lineup is Cash, Boa, Johnstone, Lozinski, Allen, and Schmidt, Maddox, Oates, and Underwood. For us, Rennie Stennett, Sanguian, Al Oliver, Willie Studgell, Richie Zisk, Dave Pucker, Richie Hebner, Frank Tavares, and Bruce Keeson. Keeson, 11 and 11 on the year, is 2-2 two and two against them. Last time out, he beat the Philadelphia Phillies. 9-1 when he upset uh, Tom Underwood. That was a tough game going along. All of a sudden, we broke it open. Now, the Pirates have got a lot of things riding tonight, and it ought to be the loosest they've been able to play practically throughout the year from the standpoint of one very simple reason, that they know all they got to do is win one of these three, and it's all over. And they only have to know one other thing. If they don't win one of these three, they only have to win two of the next six. Or the Philadelphia Phillies have got to lose two of their next seven. Now, somewhere along the line, that combination's got to all work out to where you find out that you got yourself a National League Eastern champion. So let's see how she goes. Cash at 300, four homers, 52 runs batted in. I'll tell you one thing, the Phillies have not given up. Ball inside. Billy Williams calling the balls and strikes. Andy Olson, Dick Stello, and Shag Crawford, a great umpiring crew working here. 1 0. Ball outside. Billy DeMar is coaching at third. Delay of 25 minutes officially. Strike. Happy birthday to Debbie Gazako of Boswell, Pennsylvania. To Mrs. Susie Witt and to Mrs. Pearl Deberg, who's 86 years of age, in Menno Rest Haven in Duncansville, Pennsylvania. Bouncer hits down to second. Up comes Rennie Stennett. Throws one out. We'll have a noisy, demonstrative crowd on hand. Now, there's one other thing I want to tell you. If we are able to win tonight, we will have Nellie King's post-game show from here with a ball club player, and then we will, as soon as we're able to, join John Fitzpatrick in the clubhouse for the celebration and the words of wisdom that will drop from our great athletes as they walk around and strut in all their magnificent glory for having accomplished the volley of having won it again five times in six years. Well, and they could be well proud of that if they are to do it. And if they do, we'll be down there to share it with them. Boa, the shortstop at 3.07. Two homers, 35 runs batted in. Bouncing into the dirt, one ball, one strike. Bruce Keeson's been a tough one in September. More than that, though, in championship series, he has yet to be scored on. Bouncing, a uh, foul bounce back off the net here. A ball, two strikes. A happy birthday to Bob Monroeville. Bob Lobb Monroeville attending the game today. A happy birthday, too, to Tess McNamee. The Imperials are shut in and a great Pirate fan. One ball, two strikes to Boa. Batting at 307, two homers, 35 runs batted in. Just missed 2-2. Two -two. Keeson thought he might have had it, apparently the way he looked. And best wishes to Mrs. Anna Lips of Evansburg, Pennsylvania. Shut in, a great Pirate fan. 2-2 Two -two to Boa. Bounced off the right side, speared by Keeson. Throws him out. That's the base hit if Bruce doesn't flag it down. Now the batter's going to be Jay Johnstone, batting at 335, seven homers, 52 runs batted in.
Johnstone, left hand batter, up inside to him. Lusinski, the on deck batter. Ball one, two down, none on, no score. The drizzle has stopped, and the fans are still filing in. The pitch is a let up, and it drops through for a call strike, one one. Missing outside, ball two, strike one. Don't forget now, when you call John Signa on the talk show tonight, remember all Shane Dean tonight talked about was playing golf Friday and whether I could borrow a set of his clubs. That's all it was about. That's in St. Louis, 2-1. High fly, left field, deep. Zisk back, has room, he's under. That's it. Up and three down. And we go now to the bottom of the first inning. No score. Stennett standing in now. Tom Underwood at 14 and 12. 289 batting average, 7 homers, 61 runs batting in. And send best wishes along to Mrs. Raymond Corley, an avid pirate fan in Fairmont, West Virginia. Standard at 289. Underwood, the left hander. He's not an easy mark. High ball one. He was 12 and one at Vet Stadium when we last played him over there, and we made him 12 and two, but it took some doing. It took us late into the game before we finally cracked through. One and oh, the count to Standard at 289. This one backed up, and that fastball found the inside corner. Send best wishes along to uh, Rose Rubick in Braddock General Hospital. He's a great Pirate fan and out of one of our radio engineers, Jan Rubick. We wish Rose, Aunt Rose, a speedy recovery. Two balls and a strike. Here's the two and one to Stennett. Bounced up there to the middle in a one-hand stab by Underwood, and he throws him out to Richie Allen. Defensively, the Phillies have Luzinski in left, Maddox in center, Johnstone in right, with Schmidt at third, Boa at short, Cash at second, Allen at first, Underwood and Oates, the battery. It's all over everywhere but here. Oakland is down to one, and they did not get it yesterday as Kansas City held them at bay. But Oakland, I think, plays or entertains Minnesota tonight, or in Minnesota, whatever, and the next victory or loss and it's all over in the west for the American League. Bouncer, round one hopping uh, Underwood. He must have been quite a celebrity in some other sport. He's all over that mound like a jitterbug. He jumped up high that time, spearing the ball and firing for the out here. Center field around over at 280. 17 homers, 81 runs batted in. Strike to him. Matty Alou set the major league record most at bats in 698. There's a bouncer to second, and Cash throws him out. That's the man I was just about to talk to. Cash has a chance to uh, establish that record, and we'll tell you, tie it or break it. We'll tell you about it when we come back. It's no score. We we're telling you about Dave Cash. He has an opportunity to. Uh, Set a major league record for the most at bats in a season, 698, held by Matty Lou when he was with the Pirates in 1969. The American League record, Bobby Richardson, 692 at bats in 161 games for the 62 Yankees. Dave, by the way, Cash also has the longest consecutive game streak in the majors, 334 games, stretching back to 73. And he's battling Rose and Garvey for the hit title in the National League. Rose has won the title five times. The National League record is six by Musial. Now, Cash is in with 100 and, uh, 201 hits. 
As of right now, he has been to the plate 671 times. The record by Matty Alou is 698. He will not break it in this series, but if he gets up, say, four times tonight, and tomorrow is eight, he make a run at it before he's through, I'll tell you that. All right, here's Lozinski at 299, 34 homers, 118 runs batted in. They are swung way around to the left in the outfield. Our infield overshifted also. Fastball low into the dirt. Ball one to him. No score. At home, we've only beaten. That is, over there, we've only beaten the Phillies once. In nine meetings over there, we won one game. That's all. We're up on them here. Four games to two. Foul back. They've handled us with uh, great uh, regularity. They just knocked us over for a loop. And one thing they can do, even if we win the National League Eastern title, is to go to bed every night and say, well, when we played them, we ruined them. Then we can't do anything but say, you're right. Two balls and a strike. Bounce toward third. It'll hook out foul. Hebner over quickly. Two balls, two strikes. Stan Feingold, Dr. Feingold's son Stanley, enjoying his 21st birthday at the Allegheny Club tonight. There's a delayed call, three and two, so happy birthday to Stan Feingold. Another one of the brilliant Feingolds in the family. Weak tapper to the mound, off his foot, foul ball. Lozinski is all set. Ball three, strike two to Greg. Keeson working here. The game is scoreless. 25-minute delay rain. Bruce has the sign from Sangi and the pitch. Hard wrap, base hit through the left side of the diamond. Lozinski bore into it quickly and wrapped it through to left field. That'll bring up left uh, right-hand batter Richie Allen. Sleepy at 232, 12 homers, 59 runs batter in. Richie Allen. I think Mother Allen is down here tonight. I'm sure she is. Poland Volunteer Fire Department of Poland, Ohio here. There's a smack. Keeson knocks it down. They go one. They go to first. No. Oh, that was a ripper. So they get a 1-6 on Lezinski. Allen's first no chance to nail him. Many U.S. Steel employees completely volunteer for that Poland fire department, volunteer fire department. Some 30 members are here taking in the game. Hopeful of seeing the Buckos clinch. Another National League Eastern title. And if they do, you can be coming on to take a look at the games. Games 1 and 2 are out there. Games three, four, and five are here. Games three and four are at night. Game five, if necessary, in the afternoon. There are plenty of seats available, and uh, you can get it through Ticketron, GC Murphy Store, or out here. You can buy all the reserve seats and general missions you want. Down low to Mike Schmidt at 255, 38 homers. He leads the league in homers, 95 runs batted in. One ball and no strikes. And that swing, one and one. Pittsburgh won the East in 70, 71, 72, 74. Check swing, bounce off first, might have broken his back. In uh, 1970, we had to go out west. 
when I take that back. 69, the team that opens up the season in the National League Championship Series has never won. The team that entertains for the first two games has never won the National League Championship. In 69, the Mets went down to Atlanta where they had the first two games and good night. They saw you later. In 70, we had it against the Reds and they beat us. 71, San Francisco had it out there and we beat them. 72, we had it here against the Reds, they beat us. 73, New York had it. Uh, Cincinnati had it and New York beat them. Foul back. And in 74, we had it here against the Dodgers and they beat us. This year, we're going to play the Reds. And we've got to go out there and beat them. Unless Prince's Hidden Vigorous jumps in there somewhere other. And I would hate like heck to think my Hidden Vigorous should move a thing like that. I think in division play, the team that wins the first game is the one that's got the biggest edge, the bigger edge, in my feeling. And three out of five, I think, is, gives you an edge. Starting to drizzle again. Mike Schmidt at 255, and a strike three blew it to him. He was caught looking. That'll bring up Maddox, the center fielder. Now, Gary Maddox got hit. He's been hit about four times in the last in a space of about a week or ten days. And he's got a bad right thumb, and it's hard for him to grip a bat. I want to tell you something. He is some kind of ball player, that young man. Mike Schmidt just put 1-7-0 on the books for strikeouts, which he doesn't like, but he sure does have a lot of home runs. The ground ball to short, Tavares up. He'll go to first in a hurry, and he gets mad at so we go to the bottom of the second, and there is no score. All right, here's Willie the Star standing in now. Infield shift is on, starts with a 295. Takes a strike. Underwood, a left-hander. Willie, 22 homers, 88 runs batted in. Now they stop the shift. They bring Bo over on the shortstop side. Willie takes high. Mike Schmidt is off the line about 30 feet deep at third. Boa is, oh, uh, just to the left of second as I view him. 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball outside. Cash deep back toward the outfield side. Richie Allen very deep on the line at first. The outfield pinching in on each other, giving him the lines. 2-1 pitch. Foul back. Luzinski's giving Stodgel a lot of the left field line, and right fielder Johnstone doing likewise on that side, so that there's very little gap in right center, left center. Bobby Bonds of the Giants in 1969 had 187, and Bonds in 70 had 189 strikeouts. There's a 3 2 count now. 170 strikeouts for Schmidt, so I don't think he can catch him. I hope for Mike's sake that he doesn't. They're waving the babushkas here. Three balls, two strikes to Stodgel. No score, second inning, and here's Underwood's delivery. He walks him with a curve away. Threw him a breaking ball outside. Bring up Richie Zisk at 287, 20 homers, 71 runs batted in. Boston playing the Yankees, and there is no score there as yet. The big one is right here. Everything swung left in the outfield now to Richie Zisk. And he hits a pop-up, and it'll be Cash going back for it. Running hard Johnstone, but Cash is under. He's there, and there's one out. That'll bring up Parker, the right fielder, at 308, 24 homers, 97 runs batted in. The Cobra standing in. Let's see how they'll play him in the outfield now. They're going to swing the outfield left. They'll gap him in right center. The right fielder, Johnstone, has pulled over to his own left. There's a big gap. He plays the line more. And meanwhile, Maddox, with his speed, is over in left center, so he can pull if he has to. Parker slams foul down the left line, just misses. 
funny thing I remember over in Philadelphia, he hit a, uh, what would have been a triple, just missed being a triple. But then late in the game against Underwood, he hit a sizzler in the gap in left center. And I see now that Maddox has closed that up a bit. Nelly listening in would remember very well the defensive alignment of the outfield. Fouled away, and he got an inside pitch, tried to yank it off the right side, couldn't get it there. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Continuing to drizzle here, and I think we'll play this game in the constant downpour. No score, one out and one on. It's charge of the first on the walk. We are in the second inning. The game delayed 25 minutes to begin with. Nothing in two to Parker. The pitch. He weakly hits one up towards second. Cash charges. He has one play only just in time to get him with Richie Allen making the put out. That'll put Ziskin at uh, Sergeant in the second and bring up Hebner at 247. 15 homers, 54 runs out of him. Lots of rain gear here tonight. Not reindeer, rain gear. Yellow jackets, red jackets, and umbrellas, golf equipment. There's a bouncer to the left side. They set Dodgers around third. Here comes the throw by Lusinski. Cut off. Sorry, Hebner's the second. He's out. He didn't slide. Single to Dow, the left center. That drove in Stodgill with a run. Hebner trying to go to second. The throw came from Rosinski, cut off by Mike Schmidt and thrown up to Dave Cash. And because he didn't slide, he was out. And they put the ball on him, and that retires the side. We get a run, though, and at the end of two, lead one to nothing. Let me just recap for a moment. Hebner's ball in the left field was hit rather sharply. Luzinski firing when they saw, that is, Schmidt saw that there was no way they were going to get Snudgel. He cut it off and fired it up to Cash. Hebner sliding's only chance is to slide. I'm not going to say that he would have been out or, I mean, safe even with the slide, but in running straight up, he was there where they presented an awful lot of target for Cash to put the ball to. So anyhow, it's over. We got a run in for Richie, and the Bucks lead one nothing. Here's Oates at 281. Now back. But again, I can't say the slide would or, or would not have uh, brought him in there. Strike one here at Oates. Ooh, that ball's hit awful deep to left field, but this has room. He's there on the track and is one out. Hearts lead one nothing. leading one to nothing here in the third inning. One out and one on. Pitch to uh, him from Keeson up high ball one. Hearts on top one nothing as we bat here in the day bat in the third. Raining down but not that hard through for a strike. We'll finish this game one way or another. If we are fortunate to win tonight, the Pirates uh, will have Nellie's post game show afterwards to do an interview there. Then I'll hustle down to get into the locker room with John Fitzpatrick who will be aboard to uh, carry the interview there for as long as it was reasonable with uh, Danny Mertz on the Pirate players and, uh, and all as to how they feel about things and naturally the obvious questions that we'll ask about their playing uh, since now. You wouldn't dare ask them now too much about it until they clinch it. Two balls, two strikes, and they haven't clinched it yet. And you never get one of these Philadelphia players, any part of them, to admit this is over. 
They're still breathing, my friends. Check, swing, foul. And as long as you're breathing, you got a chance. Two and two. Punched a foul down the right line. Underwood's a pretty good hitter. Pitch. There's a ball drilled toward right. Parker right there comes on. Now the ball sinks on him, but he grabs it about knee high. Two down. And Cash, the second baseman that standing in has been to the plate now 671 times. This is number 672. World record 698. Matty Alou. Well, a number of times at bat. Physically at bat now is one thing. A time at bat is another. And we're talking about times at bat. Starting to rain a little harder, and the fans are staying right in there, though. One ball, no strikes. You ever stop to think how many times the Babe Booth physically went to the plate the year he drew over? There's a high fly left center. Oliver drifting back, looking up through the raindrops. Got it. We go, uh, I was just going to say, every stop to think how many times Bay Ruth must have gone to the plate the year he hit 60 and drew over, oh, 150-some-odd walks. Unbelievable. So we go to the bottom of the third, and it's to one to nothing Pittsburgh. Spider standing in there, Frank Tavares. Montreal uh, leading the Cardinals 4-3 at the end of eight innings. Huh? Tavares batting a 220. Underwood's delivery backs up, but not enough. Cardinals have tied him up 4-4 four four in the first of a doubleheader at Montreal. They got Roboski in again. <laughs> This is when it's tough for the Cardinals to play baseball, let me tell you, or anybody. Two balls, no strikes. But this is when your pride brings you along. Strikes. Two and one. Rain continues to drop. Fly ball left field, back over the head of Lozinski, going back, and he gets the ball at the wall. It's the farthest I've ever seen Tavares hit a ball. That's a home run in Wrigley Field, Nelly. Just an out here, old buddy. He took him to the wall on the boards. That's got to be the longest he's ever, the spider ever jerked one. <laughs> one out. Right to the wall, he took the bow. Now, Keeson standing in. Keeson waiting, delivered by Underwood for a strike. Thurman Munson hit uh, his number 12 in the home run department with one on in the first inning in the uh, Yankee Red Sox game. It's uh, Rick Wise and uh, Weed Reaper in New York, whoever that guy is. 2 nothing, first inning Yankees. And there is uh, five, their magic number for the Red Sox, five. They got a pitcher I never heard of. They brought him up. Win by Hebner's base hit. Fly ball right field by Stennett. Drifting over Johnstone. Gets the ball. Keeson holding two down. Uh, batter will be Sandin. Pirates lead one nothing. We are in the third. Red Sox got a tough break in that uh, they've lost uh, Jim Rice, one of their two sensational rookies. He, along with Lynn, 
They had both knocked in over 100 runs, and he suffered a fracture of the fourth metacarpal bone in his left hand, and uh, he's out for the season, as well as any playoffs or World Series games if they get in. He's out to it. Hi. They're in a very good mathematical position. Three and a half game lead over Baltimore with seven games to play, but the Orioles have been playing like gangbusters, I'll tell you that. And right now, Red Sox are losing. Hi to Sangy Ball, too. Ball two and no strikes. Keith in his first. Sangy awaits Underwood six. Strike. Sangy bounced out on a comeback to the mound. Don't think he liked the last call. He's talking a bit as though it might have been just a bit inside. He drew a line with his back, telling Billy he thought the ball was in that far. Ball two, strike one. Foul back. Ooh, he's mad now. Oh, and ran right up into the room where Mr. and Mrs. McCoy are, over there. I guess it's Mr. and Mrs. John Galvin. Mr. Galvin's got a baseball for hard way. Gee, all he'd have to do is go ask for one. I think Danny Murtaugh would give it to him. I'm almost convinced he would. Ball two, strike two. Let up, popped up. Shallow right. Back cash, hard. Back cash. Now Johnstone calls him off. We're down in the third, leaving Keeson at first after the base hit. At the end of three, Bucks on top, one nothing. Might get all I could. Well, I can, because I think Cincinnati would be burrowing over here, knowing those two games are night games. Ball three here to ball. Look out if he gets a board. He does get a board, and he can steal bases. And so this now takes away to, uh, that's the first walk. This takes away, for the moment anyhow, any changeup pitches that Keeson might want to throw to Johnstone. He wouldn't dare throw that slap pitch up there for fear that on that pitch, Cash might be gone. So, let's, uh, did I say Cash? I should say Boa. Boa has stolen 24 bases. He's been caught six times. Johnstone, the batter. Now, let's watch. Stigel holding Boa. Not running, pitches a strike. Well, let's see, too. The sliding pit area is a little muggy. Just a little bit of a slop due to the constant rain. That's bothersome uh, running a ball or anybody else. Takes the run, takes high, Johnstone ball on it. Brought uh, Sangi around, ready to throw. Ball one, strike one. It also cuts down a little bit on the fake of the runner. The good guy, uh, the threat to steal, will go out like he's going to steal and stop or keep going so that you never know what it is doing. Throw the first and back safely, Boa. Score one nothing. Pittsburgh, fourth inning. Rain delayed, 25 minutes. Still raining now, but we're playing. The look to first, there goes Boa's fake, and there's a ball hit the left. Up in the air, just going back, back, back. He uh, back in time to get it. He set it up just as much and turned left and then roared straight back and hauled it in. One away. Long drive left field twice now. Johnstone's hit deep. Here's Lozinski, who hit single sharply to left field on a 3 2 pitch in the second inning. Red Sox at Yankees ballpark, which now, of course, is Shea Stadium. Yankees lead there 2 1 now as Red Sox got a run. Rick Wise in that one. Bottom of the second, the Yankees leading 2 1 home on Munson. All right, Luzinski with one on, one nothing Pittsburgh, fourth inning. Dreary evening, no doubt about that. It'll be turned into an evening of delirious joy. Strike is called. If the Bucks can do it, if they can, we'll have Nellie King's post game show. And by that time, John Fitzpatrick get down here and we'll go into the locker room and talk for a while. So don't leave. Your network station, wherever you're listening. I called Pirates Clinch Day Division in 1970 on the 27th of uh, September against New York when Doc Ellis beat McAndrew. 
in game number 159, and we were then went to 87-72, 87-72 losses. Strike two to Lozinski. They're going this time. The ball is fouled back, and thank goodness it was because he had second base stolen. All right, so 1971 clinched at St. Louis on the 22nd of September. Luke Walker beat Bob Gibson in game number 156. And that gave us a mark of 94-62 when we clinched. Rosinski fouls outside the uh, right line and up in the seat. Last year's wild finish, game number 162, final game of the season, 11 innings. And the Cubs hit Bobby Robertson in the back of the coconuts, and we went on to take it. One ball, two strikes to Lazinski. Boa on first base. He holds his time, ball outside, two and two. So in 1970, we clinched. upset a little. But let me tell you, Richie's got that foot out there. They said. There's Allen. That's the second hit, and both of them by Lezinski. Both of them by third. Now Allen bounced into a force in the second inning. Trouble here. You gotta get a Hoover. If you get a Hoover on Richie Allen, you've done something. There's a ground to the short. Savera stumbles and drops the ball, throws it to first, and no, doesn't get anybody. We lose a double play ball. Let's see how they rule. They'll rule Ellis. He had it. That was well spanked on one hop. If he comes up with it, he throws the center. And it looked to me, and I can't be sure whether he tried to get into second by himself and throw the first or just control the ball or throw it too quickly. I don't know. But somewhere in there, he lost his opportunity to get anybody. And it did appear that with the slow track and the way the ball was hit sharply, if he's up there, he's got all the time in the world to get Lazinski because he's slow. Uh, but you would turn it over fast to get out. I mean, even if you don't get him, you got two out with runners on the corners. Now, we've got everybody on there. And that error charge to him brings up Mike Schmidt with the bases loaded. Mike struck out in the second inning. One to nothing, Pittsburgh. Now they need a double play, and they're back for it. Ball outside, and Keeson slipped that time coming off the mound. Here's one of the tough things. Uh, Rooker, in a situation like this, having to fix with the bad weather, strained uh, and pulled a groin muscle. And it's one of the tough things about the only thing that uh, many argue about with division play and this situation here. This is the last time the Phillies are in town. They're going to try to make you play the game if they can, and 
either side could lose a player as a result of the, the situation. Bouncing foul to third. Now we have uh, John Candelari just loosening. And uh, he, that's all he's doing is loosening. But Kent Ficulti is loosening, and he's in earnest. Next Thursday night's a big one. The Art Rooney testimonial. Dinner, and it's a big one. And they got uh, Franco Harris and Rocky Blair and many others coming in. His eminence, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Curve of beauty, strike two, one and two. That's at the William Penn Hotel. For next Thursday night, benefiting the Catholic Youth uh, Association. Tommy Foster saying things are moving along very, very well. Still some seats available at $25. And it's a great charity. And uh, here is Eminent Speak. And believe me, it's worth every penny of that and more. One and two. Bounce toward third, heading it up. There it is. The center throws high. Throws to first. Double play! Allen coming in, and Richie was really boiling in there, but Rennie got it out of there just in time and got it over for the double play. Five, four, three, man, old brother, and they're out of it without a score. You know, the bottom of the fourth, still leading one to nothing. Al Oliver standing in now. That was a very, very big double play in the fourth inning here, I'll tell you that. Put a red circle around it. Ball one down. Bind drive, left center. It's in the gap. We got a bug on the rug for all of it. Second inning, time called as Underwood cleans off his uh, cleats. That double is the third hit. And boy, it was a wicked smash by Al Oliver, who's got some record going on doubles. Oliver's hit his 39th double of the year. Stodgill Grimes, left field, base hit. Here comes Oliver around third. They're waving him home. He'll
Pitch is upstairs. Ball two and strike one. Here's a look and the two one pitch. There's a ball hit deep to center, right at Maddox. He's going back, going back. It's off his wall and he can't hold it. Stargell's on his way to third. He'll score. And here comes the throw. Not in time. Is it going wild? They had a rule that doubled. This straight away, and if Maddox can't hold it, I got to call it a double. 72 runs batted in. Stoggle scoring all the way. And here's the Cobra. Time called and going out is Ray Rimplemeyer to talk things over. Dodgel single, just doubled. And the Pirates quickly now lead three to nothing. And Ray Rippleman talking here to Tommy Underwood with nobody out. As the Bucks driving here, they're going to stay with Underwood. My gracious, they got a bunch of Babushka waivers around here. I'm beginning to believe Babushka power is all important. I'm beginning to believe I know it is. Anytime you get a lot of ladies mixed up in the town, you the way they can show you how to do it. I want to tell you, and these ladies are strictly for the big bad buckos to do it all. Parker bounced out the second. High ball one. One of the things the Bush Power has done for the ladies, there's no doubt about it, it has tremendously enthusiastically been greeted by the ball players, but more important, all the other fans all over the nation if they've heard the enthusiasm of what's going on. The pitch, foul out of play. And uh, Charlie Feeney uh, that was on Nellie King's post-game show went on to point out that there's no question in his mind that it's added at least 100 or 100 and some other thousand people to the park just coming out to wave the babushkas and root like the Dickens for their buckos. One ball, one strike. Nobody out, two runs in. Pitch. Bounced off the right side, gets by Cash for a base hit. Just is coming to third, they're waving him home. He scores! to make. It would bother him tremendously. It would bother him tremendously to have to make this move in Philadelphia, and I, uh, in that regard, uh, my heart would ache for him, and it does. I have been a Danny Ozark friend and fan for a long time, and I want to win. He knows that. That's the name of this game, but I don't like the way he's been treated. I cannot abide the way in which they have treated him in his hometown. They have Really ripped it. Well, he's coming out there. They're bringing in Ron. I think it's Schubert. I wait a minute. I, the last time over in Philadelphia, I made a horrible mistake. I had the wrong guy in. I went through and he Nelly, I told Nelly about it. He about fell over. Without them knowing it. Tom Underwood leaves, and this is Ron Schuler that is in there. You do, do you hurry? So, uh, you do a little thinking, I'll be right back right after this announcement. Here, why don't we 
take 20 seconds for our local stations. If you're expecting a baby, the Pittsburgh Organization for Childbirth Education wants to help make your pregnancy, delivery, and parenthood easy. You can join a small childbirth education group and learn the joys of welcoming a new member to your family. For more information, call POST at 221-3066. Abner's a batter. I'll tell everybody laughing at me here. The doctor just gave me an inoculation. Oh, how does that hurt? Ooh. Right where old Robert sits now. And up here working all by yourself. It's tough. We're not out there in the alley, and I just got wrapped. And I got a needle that's longer than in my arm. Strike two. Ooh. I think it would have been better if I'd have got what's going around, not to get inoculated against it. I went out, that's right, I just got a shot, not a drink, a shot with a syringe. No ball, two strikes, the pitch. Bounce to first foul. Now, uh, Underwood, it went uh, three innings, nobody out here in the fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six base hits against Tom, centered by Tom. He walked one. He did not strike anybody out. So two pitch. Weekly hit up the right side. Up comes Allen. He throws the ball sharply to second, and uh, they get the man there, and not in time to get heading it. It's a 3-6 play on Parker. And bring up Tavares. There's always a first for everything in there, folks. Now, you never thought your announcer would leave a game and get an inoculation, would you? But it did. People here in the box are a little shocked. They never thought that had happened. But they had to look at it, you know. When you sit up here, you see anything. It's part of the risk you run when you come into my booth. To there, striking. We hope for station identification. I'll get it in a moment. A little cold, too, to be undressed. Here's the look. Curve knocked him off the plate and it broke right in for a strike. Frank can't believe it. While he's arguing, we'll take the 10 for station identification of Pirate Baseball Network. Bang him, Pop! Radio Rich, he wanted to run when he saw Doc come up there with that syringe. The needle looked like six inches long. Hang in there, Rich. It was for me, not for you. <laughs> You're allergic to the kind of silver knife. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Lights are leading here, four to nothing. The scan isn't over now. We're in the fourth inning. Fighter bouncing to the shortstop. Bad hop off Boa's chest. He throws in time for the out. That took a very bad hop and hit him, but he held on to it to make the play on Hebner. Richie, uh, of course, as you know, doesn't get a very big lead off the base, so plays like that are easy to convert at second base. And that Bobo against a faster runner or a man with a bigger lead is going to be costly. Now Keeson, he singled up the middle, but uh, this is, Richie knows it, he'd be the first to tell you. For some unknown reason, you just can't get a bigger lead than that. The Yankees are leading Red Sox 2-1 to one in the 3.5. Swing by Keeson, looked like he wanted to go off that right side. Couldn't do it. Munson hit a home run in that game. Montreal and the Cardinals are in the 11th inning of the first game. Four to four at Montreal. No balls, one strike. Three runs are in. 
run it first to bass. Strike two. Stop and coming over to third base is the bass that he's done a while like he wants to come home. They didn't call time and the oats, the catcher just stood there at home plate and didn't do anything on a pitch. It was a wild pitch. Out comes Ozark. I don't know what he's going to talk about. Nobody called time. The ball was thrown way inside like it was thrown to Keeson and he got away from it and came all the way to the backstop and Oaks didn't go after the ball. And up the second went Key, uh, Tavares, and when he saw that Oates was standing there, he went over to third. So it's a... Uh, Two-base wild pitch, I guess. Then a pitch from stretch, the delivery. Curveball stuck him out swinging. Three runs on four hits, no errors, and one left. And at the end of four, a Bucks lead four nothing. Say, when you need a brake job, make sure you get new brake shoes, too. How do you do that? Well, just ask for Delco brakes. Because with Delco brakes, you always get new shoes as well as new linings. And this is very important. Because Delco brake shoes are properly shaped and finished at the factory. And they've been treated with rust inhibitor. Now, that's not all. The landing on Delco brake shoes also has crown ground finish. This special finishing process makes the break-in period easier for you because it lets the landing shape itself quickly to the drum. And they're designed to prevent pulling to the right or the left during break-in. So if you're in a car right now and those brakes don't feel just right, see your AC Delco retailer about the full line of quality Delco brakes. Delco brake shoes are distributed by Homestead Automotive Supply, 846 Forest Avenue in West Homestead, Valley Auto Parts Company, 329 Airbrake Avenue in Wilmerding, and Penn Hills Auto Parts, 119 Penn Oak Drive in Penn Hills. Well, that fourth inning was productive one. Oliver doubled. Stodge will single him home. Zisk hit a ball deep to center over the head of Maddox. He got a glove on it. Bounced off the wall. Couldn't hold the ball. Double. Run batted in. Parker singled the right on the dribber. Driving in a run. 98 runs batted in Parker. 72 runs batted in Zisk. 89 runs batted in Stodge. Then that concluded that part of the story. So the Pirates now have four runs. And Underwood is in with three innings for four runs. Six hits. No strikeouts in a walk. And for the moment is the picture of record. Ron Schuler, who's four and four on the year. Here's the man that's come in to uh, stop it. And we go now to the fifth inning where the game uh, hangs in the balance from the standpoint of being a legally played game. Here will be Maddox and Oates, and then there's action again in the bullpen for the Phillies. It is Wayne Simpson, former Pirate, and former Red. Ball inside to Maddox, and he has pointed a finger at Keeson as though he has challenged him. And Keeson just looked at him, and there's some ill feeling here. Now, apparently, Maddox, who has been hit and thrown at several times, and been hit about three or four different times, is being talked to now by Billy Williams. Maddox was hit by Fork. And he was hit three or four different times in the last five or six games. And I know he feels pretty tough. Now, he may feel that the pitch to Keeson by Schuler way inside was uh, something that he was being accused of being retaliatory. And he put a finger out to warn Keeson he did not like that. As a strike for the outside corner. I have to say this. I'm not saying that Keeson threw tight to him or tried to hit him, but I don't blame Maddox for being a bit edgy. I really don't, ladies and gentlemen. This young man has been hit in the ribs, been hit in the thumb. He's been hit about three or four different times, and all in the space of a week, and the last one put him out of action for quite a while. And he had to believe they were after him a little bit. So I don't think, however, that Bruce 
through at, uh, I really don't. I just thought he pitched him tight. In any event, Gary felt otherwise. And that's the way I reported as Johnny Oates stands in now. He flies to left field. Pirates are leading four to nothing. This would be no time in the world to wake up the Phillies by throwing at them. This be the this is the reason I think there's no reason in the world for Keeson to uh, be coming close to a Philly hitter on purpose. You don't want to wake him up. What I mean by waking him up, I mean give him any more reason to beat him than they already got. One ball, no strikes. And number two, we got two more games with him. You get them mad enough, they got a couple of flamethrowers that can drill you. But your star's not actions. You got to think of all these things. And I'm sure Bruce is thinking of all those things. You don't think that guy Carlton can't fire? We were going to look at him for the week out. Foul line, uh, no, a little dribbler off third by Oak. going to be a base hit. He'll score Maddox easily, I think. No, they're not going to let him run. So they get a little bloop down the left line. There's a, enough of us hit by Oates to make you wretch. One of the weakest looking doubles you've ever seen. You didn't even mean to hit it. It just blooped and went in there. So Maddox goes to third, Oates goes to second, and here come the Phillies now with nobody out. And they're going to have a batter. Tim McCarver is going to bat in place of Ron Schuler. Now Kent Picoli getting up again. That's the third hit. Got Wayne Simpson, as I told you, loosening a right-hander down the line. And we got ourselves a pretty good game going here, haven't we? And it's far from over. And here's a guy that down through the seasons against our ball club's been a very, very tough pinch batter, Tim McCarver. Swing foul back. Tim batting 246, one homer, six runs batted in. Uh, Candelaria is joining uh, Kent Picoli in the bullpen. Now, Candelaria was up before, and I thought that perhaps he was going to be a pitcher getting ready to start. Now I think he's firing in earnest to come in and be in relief if needed. No balls and a strike to left hand batting Tim McCarver. Steps out just as Keaton goes to deliver. That's one thing that the umpire is allowed them to do no matter what. The batter steps out, they just call time. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Very frankly. Once the pitcher started his motion. No balls, one strike. This is high, one and one. Gary Maddox drew a walk. Oates hit a punching checkoff swing type of thing. It's the weakest looking swing you'd ever see, and he got a little looping double down the left line. That was two times. There's McCarver in a swing. So when you see those little things like that, oh, we've seen them in our own ball club. Had that happen. Well, it's good to see Mid and Tommy Thompson out here for the kill. What they hope will be the finale. A ball, one strike, two count. Pack a Palmer lunch and come on out here and enjoy the run. Here's the one-two. Bounce down to first base. Stodgill has him unassisted. It'll knock in a run. Maddox scores. Holding at second base is Oates. What for? I guess he felt that he wasn't fast enough to get over to third without Stodgill stepping on first and firing a strike to third and get him. And in this situation, with a score of four to one and uh, one out, not a bad. Not a bad maneuver by Johnny. 
So the run is driven in. And a ball punched up toward the uh, short. Tavares throws out catch. Oates has to hold it second. Paid at tennis tonight, 13,176. Don't forget, we play on the game tomorrow night and the night after. And then we go away for three days and come back for a week's practice. It'll be interesting to find out what Danny Murtaugh intends to do once we've clinched. Be it tonight, tomorrow, or whenever, for that week of inactivity that is from baseball. Boa went out on the comeback of the mound, drew a walk. Pirates lead 4-1. We we're in the top half of the fifth inning. Boa reaching for one. Hits it weakly up the short. Tavares charges. So is he now. They get a run. On one hit. Strand a runner. End of four and a half. Bucks lead 4-1. And there's a young man on the hill now, Wayne Simpson. And uh, we used to have him. He was with Cincinnati. Uh, and he's probably been battling hard for his comeback. And uh, he's on. We send our best wishes along to Dave Regan. The Shady Side area. His daughter's here watching the game and rooting. Excuse me, I was just arranging here with John Fitzpatrick uh, what we're doing here because, Johnny, if we win this, I'm going to hold up here. Hopefully, I'll have Bruce Keeson on for Nellie King's postgame show, and then John will be down in the locker room. Oh, there's a pitch from Simpson inside the Stennis. Knocked him back off the plate, and we're having a little uh, ding-a-ling going on here. One ball, no strikes too many. Ball high, 2-0. Now, if it gets a little uh, hairy, in the umpire's opinion, that's when they're going to step in here and say time. But uh, first, we've got to win this thing, and we haven't won it by any stretch of the imagination. 2-0. Oh. Outside ball three. If we are fortunate to beat the Phillies tonight and clinch it, I will have Nellie King's postgame show immediately following, and I'll hopefully be able to interview Bruce Keeson to talk to him. And then I'll swing the microphone down to the dugout, or into our locker room where John Fitzpatrick, after we do our proper commercial breaks and all, we'll then we'll come back here and go right down to the locker room where John Fitzpatrick will be talking. And I'll hurry, hurry on down and join him, and we will then chat with Danny Murtaugh and the players and all on the different things so that we can uh, give you all of that. And Radio Rich will be down here to help produce it for us. And Bill Richards will handle it up here with Shady McCracken. San Guillen over to the batter. Simpson delivers. We take off with Stennett. Balls hit the third. They only have the one play. It's first base. One out. Five, four, five to three on San Guillen. Stennett into second and molested. Cardinals Ted Simmons hit his 17th home of the year. And the 12th inning went on to make it 6-4. Cardinals still batting in the... 12th inning of game number one with Montreal. The fight there and here now is after if we're able to win is for second place money. And it's not anything at which you'd sneeze. Oliver bounced the second double scored a run. Simpson's curve is through there for a strike. I'll repeat again if you're just tuning in because you could have been in here late. My partner, Nellie King, is bedded with uh, a virus of some sort. He's got him in bed with a high temperature and a rough throat. So we're going to have him 
Sorry, he can't be with us, particularly if we're able to clinch it tonight because I know how much he would enjoy it. We'll hang in there, Nellie. Get well, partner, because we're going to have to go at those Cincinnati Reds together. We're going to need all we can do to nail them. One ball, one strike. Strike a good changeup. I'm looking for a sheet that tells me pitch, foul back. You know that I don't have a record. I'm trying to find the standings of the National and the American League race. I think they put everything in we can think of but that. Now we got it. Thank you. All right. One and two to Oliver. Foul off first. Bucks have won 89, lost 66. If we win tonight, this will be our 90th victory. Make us 90-66 on this, the 22nd of September in game number 156. We clinched on our 156th game back in 1971 when we won 94. Swing by Oliver, strikeout. No, foul tip not held by us. Earliest clinching was the 21st of September in the 144th game of 1972 when we won 91 and lost 53. Now that was our record at that point. We tap out in front of the plate. Oates coming up for it. Throws in time to Allen over to third stand. Please remember the records that I'm giving you are the what we had in victories and losses at the time of clinching, not what we ultimately finished up with in the year. All right, here's Stodgill. He's walked and scored. He's singled to drive in his 89th run. He has scored twice. His next home run will be number 369. And when he gets that, he will be in a tie with Ralph Kine at the 23rd place all-time Major League home run. Needs two to tie Gil Hodges, 22nd Major League home run. So he's, uh, he'll get back and some more before he's hung up his cleats. Simpson up high, ball one. Bucks lead 4-1, fifth inning. Two down. Simpson in relief of Schuler, who relieved Underwood. Simpson low on a sinking pitch, ball two. Two balls, no strike. And the 2-0 delivery up high with a slow, soft curve, ball three. Three out. Stodio watching ball four dip underneath the knees. That's the third walk in the game, the second to Wilbur. The batter will be Richie Zisk. He popped up the second. He hit a screening double to center off the boards in and out of the glove of Maddox. And if Maddox can't catch him, there ain't nobody going to catch him. If you'll pardon that the use of the English language. Or the misuse of it, perhaps I should say. There's one left in the outfield. The pitch to him by Simpson. Almost hits this on the left elbow. Ball one. It's too tight. That's all he's doing. Come on now, folks. He's... It was a good pitch. He just pitched him up in tight. One and oh to count. There's a curve that's in there. One ball and one strike. One and one to look. And the pitch. Curve strike two is called. Mr. Bush Kapar, Karen Kukrin. He's for Rudin for the Buckos. He was out with us when Nellie and I were out in center field. Both occasions. Turned into quite an autograph. Steiner. One two pitch. This curve just missed. Ooh, that was close. Simpson started off the mound. We have a ball two strike two count.
Runners on the corners, and the 2-2 pitch to Zisk. He stuck him out on a slow curveball, and that is strikeout number two. It also retires the side. No runs and no hits, no errors, and two left. At the end of five, Pittsburgh four and Philadelphia one. Well, uh, just bring you up to date now. It's uh, 13,176 paid tonight on a very drizzly night. I know we undoubtedly have a big audience in the tri-state area because uh, this one can mean the National League Eastern Championship for the Pirates if they can win it. And there's a lot to it. We are hopeful and uh, in the Radio Rich will be able to get Bruce Keeson so that we can use him on the post-game show and interrogate him a little bit about the uh, Maddox incident that's occurred here tonight and other things, and uh, more particularly a plus than a minus type of interview. On top of that, hopefully then uh, join John Fitzpatrick in the absence of our partner Nellie King, who's ill tonight in the locker room for the celebration. John Stone. But to do that first, three, six, nine, twelve outs have got to be recorded, and the Philly has got to be stopped. There's a strike to Johnstone. Twice tonight, he has flied very deep to left field. No balls, one strike, and the pitch. Sinking delivery low and away for a ball, 1-1. One, one. We're all set to invade Cincinnati. Radio Rich will be going over there with us. Al Gottman, and we'd be all set for our statistics with Eddie Rothrung and company, but first we got to earn the right to get there. 1-1 one, one delivery, low, two balls and a strike. And if we do... And uh, Nellie and I will be bringing you all the action direct from Cincinnati. A couple of weeks from now, a couple of weeks from last Sunday. Two balls and a strike last Saturday. Ball three, three and one. What's the date of the playoff, Rich? October, October four, five, Saturday, Sunday. There's a walk to Johnstown. That walk is the third given up by Keeson. Then on the sixth is a travel date. Seven, eight, and nine are the three dates here at night for seven, at night for the eighth, and the afternoon on the ninth, if necessary. And folks, I'd be buying my tickets for IU right now. Seven dollars the box. You can get them a limit of four over the counter. None through the mail. Ticketron and G.C. Murphy, and of course through the mail for reserves and general admission. Keeson takes a uh, whack at one and low inside ball one to Lozinski. And again, the bullpen starts moving around to Colby particularly is up. Lozinski has two hits in the game, both been hard singles to left. Strike is called. The big inning, the hairy one for Pittsburgh and Keeson was the fourth. Bow a walk. Johnstone line deep left, Luzinski single. Allen got on what should have looked like a double play ball turned into an error. And then Schmidt hit one, and Hebner threw, but threw a little high. Stennett made a great play holding the bag and firing over for the out for the double play. That was a very, very big inning. We look back on that one if we were to win it, but fourth will be uh, extremely big. Candelaria again joins Sokolby. Johnstone not held by Stodgill. Pitch to Lezinski, 1-1 one, one swing, 1-2. One that time, and I'll tell you one thing, Keeson's keeping that ball down around his knees and away from him. Now in the big game going in New York at the end of five. The Yankees are leaving Boston 2-1 with a pitcher I've never heard of. Rick Wise for Boston, the Yankee pitcher I've never heard of. I can only spell it, and I'm not sure I can pronounce it. Weedry, G-U-I-D-R-Y. Ooh. Keeson, I think, thought he had a curveball strike three. Ball two, strike two. Swing! Foul tip, not held. Mm -hmm. 
So, Rosinski still has life. Ball two, strike two. I guess uh, I should correct myself. It was a foul ball, not held. A foul tip, I presume, connotes that the ball caught. Ball high, three and two. Somebody wrote Nellie and me about that the other day, that a foul tip means when it is caught. And a foul ball means it's not caught. Well, anyhow, the ball and strike count now is three and two, and John Stone's at first. And the ball was fouled into and out of the mitt. Keeson on the 3-2 pitch. They're running. Ball four. We're getting into some trouble. John Stone at second and Luzinski at first. And here's Richie Allen. Bounced into a force play and got on an error in the fourth inning. Time call while they wipe the cleats for Stodgill. Everybody's down now. We've got three players borrowing a piece of equipment to get rid of the mud in their cleats. Stodgill. And Keeson are the two, really. Rivera and Stenner are either watching or waiting for the two to do the same thing. All right, Dick Allen in with uh, two on and none out. Pittsburgh leading four to one. And this thing is anything but over with this ball club. I will tell you now. Anything but over. Pitch to Richard. Swing and a foul. Ooh, what a whack he took at that one. Well, we all had visions of winning this thing real fast, like one nothing in the nine twenty minutes, and celebrating a little bit and going home and settling down and watching Miami open. Uh-uh, not tonight. Now we got to watch this one. Well, this is a big one. Nothing and one the count to Richie Allen. Two men aboard and nobody out. Pitch is high, almost threw it away. One ball, one strike. Kendall area, the left-hander. Kent Dakovi, the right-hander, loosening time called as... Uh, we're going to have a little meeting out there. Johnstone drew a walk, and Luzinski ran the count full. He drew a walk, and Richie Allen standing in. And of late, Richie had been hitting the ball a ton. Game delayed uh, 25 minutes due to rain. 13,176 looking on the entire official party, minus Bing Crosby here. Tom Johnson, John Galvitt, Dan Galvitt, the entire family, and uh, biting fingernail time now with this man up there. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Knocked him off the plate. Ball two and strike one. We're going to have Don Osborne come out now and talk here. Ball two and strike one. We have gone to the sixth inning. And with two men on, they're going to make a change right here with a ball two strike one count. They're going to make a change. And let's see. It's going to be Kent to Colby. So Bruce Keeson has gone five innings. He has allowed three hits. He struck out one batter. He has walked four and could walk five if uh, Richie Allen gets to walk off Kent to COVID. Because if he should walk Richie, Tacovey will be uh, not charged with that walk. Kent Tacovey coming in has won one and lost two. And he has three saves. Top of the sixth and then out. Keeson can win. There's no way he can lose this game. Well, you might have missed it earlier due to the lateness of the hour now, but uh, a great hand for Bruce Keeson. 
And I'd still like to have him on the post-game show with, uh, regardless. If he's available. Cardinals uh, six. Montreal four at the final. Uh, Ted Simmons won it with his 17th homer in the 12th inning. Winning pitcher Alan Raboski, 13 and three. The losing pitcher Woody Fryman, eight and 12. He might have missed it earlier on Nelly's pregame show. We had Charlie Feeney on, and I just thought I'd let everybody know because I know that there'll be some people calling John Cigna here in Pittsburgh to talk this thing over about what was written in this morning's post gazette by Pally, my partner, Charlie, my friend Charlie Feeney, which he properly reported that uh, Red Chain Deans felt that I intimidated the umpires to the degree that they uh, didn't call balls and strikes properly. And there was a situation in which uh, yesterday there was an argument with the plate umpire, Art Williams, by the Cardinals that he uh, called a uh, ball four on a pitch if there was a strike as far as they were concerned right down the slot. And the redhead had said this as he came out that we went to the way Bob broadcast the games and intimidated the umpires. We well, anyhow, went to that effect. Then somebody told Charlie that I had exchanged words with Red Shingles. And what they didn't tell him was that they were comfortable, nice words. There was nothing, anything to do about the ball game at all. And I didn't even know that the redhead had said anything what you read about in the paper because I met him in the press room after I'd come up off the, had come up off the field. And my only conversation was, could I borrow a set of his golf clubs when we played with each other in St. Louis next Friday? <laughs> but if you read it in the paper, you think we had a terrible fight. We did not. 2-1, a bouncer to third. Up comes Hebner with it. There's one to send it. First base, double play. In the second, Losinski. Or rather, check that in the third is uh, Johnstone. Let me have a pencil with you. I just made my 756th mistake of uh, my 10 year career, the last 10 years. This now gives me second all time National League announcers in mistakes in the veteran class. In the veterans class, and I'm a veteran, but I made an error. Thank you. Nelly had a, an eraser in there. He keeps, Nelly, my partner, keeps erasers for my mistakes. So I've always told him when I first started working with him, I said, Nelly, I want you to always carry an eraser for my mistakes. Curveball to Mike Smith. Gee, that double play is the second in the game, and believe me, it is a huge, huge, huge double play. Mike Schmidt struck out, bounced into a big, huge double play back in the fourth inning. Two down now. Runner at third. 4-1 Pittsburgh. Ball high. One and one. Murtaugh, in bringing in Ciccoli, brings in the guy that he wants to try to get to throw the type of pitch in which they'll hit the double play. That's a sinking pitch. Ciccoli threw what appeared to be a good sinking pitch up there, and Richie tabbed it, hit it hard enough to third. They go around the horn on him. One one. Curve of beauty, strike two. That had Schmidt bailing out, and the ball broke right in over the inside corner. He really popped it. Night in September. One ball and two strikes. What are you smoking, Rich? That's no wonder you're hacking. He's going to be the worst of what kind of tobacco is that? Get you a new boatload or something. What is it? Oh, my gracious. A ball one, strike two, ten. Time out. The Schmidt steps out. One ball, two strikes. The look, the pitch. Fouled away. Come to think of it, Rich, I got about... Got about uh, 35 pipes. If you like them, you put a new bit in them. Or they're in gray or they're beauties. And they're well broken in. I'll bring you some. One ball, two strikes. Takovi checks the pitch. 
Took him out. Boy, he threw him a wicked side armor. And Schmidt went around, tried to stop. Strikeout number 171 goes into the books for the year. And uh, that's his record. Schmidt's strikeouts of 171. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. That double play was huge. Pirates are on top, four to one. For the uh, Red Sox fans, where the Yankees are leading two to one, the Yankees have now made two pitching changes. They switched up. Uh, this fellow Guidry to Pagan in the sixth inning and now to Martinez in the sixth inning. So Red Sox in the sixth are going at somebody. Here's Parker now to Cobra. Bounce to second and single to right to drive in uh, a run. That's leading four to one. Wayne Simpson, the third pitcher. We've had a little, uh, a little hard feeling tonight. As, uh, we're going to have Bruce Keeson hopefully on the air with us after the postgame show. I cannot conceive of Bruce deliberately throwing at Gary Maddox. I cannot under any circumstances. Ball one. I know that Gary felt so because he warned him by saying something to him. But you got to remember, too, that Gary's been hit three or four times in the last couple of weeks. And the last one, the black tore his right thumb off. So he felt that maybe they were headhunting on him. But I'm sure that there's no way Bruce would have been throwing at him first place and Bruce wants to hit somebody he can, he can hit you you know he, he just pitched him tight in my opinion I really mean that 2-0 high foul on the plate of the left but we do want to have Bruce on anyhow and then if we are to win the game following uh, Bruce being on with us uh, we'll stay right there I'll switch to John Fitzpatrick for uh, interviewing the players in the clubhouse and I'll rejoin I'll come down and join John as soon as I can bail out from up here Two balls and a strike. Weekly hit up the left side and over goes ball. Stumbles, comes up firing, and oh, hey, they call him out at first base. And I want to tell you something. Ah, if they had a camera on that shot, that would be something. Parker's going to be restrained by a pig on. They say he's out. Six to three. Here's Hebner, single to left, driving in a run, bounced out to short. That's leading four to one. Tom Underwood, thus far the picture of record. Richie Allen holding the line on uh, Hebner. And a base hit in the right center by Richie, coming up forward is Maddox. And Simpson has given up his first hit. That'll bring up Frank Tavares. Frank is 0 for 2. Tavares, fly to left, bounced into a force. Pittsburgh 4, Philadelphia 1 here in the sixth inning. Wayne Simpson, the right-hander, throws the strike. No ball, one strike. The look again, and the pitch. Swing, and he took a whack at it. I'll tell you one thing about Frank. He had a ball in the third inning as far as I've seen him hit one. Took uh, the left fielder, Luzinski, right to the left field boards. I never saw him hit a ball that far in my life. So it's no balls and two strikes. Pitch down. Weekly hit off the right side. Diving Allen comes up from the knees, throws out. And Hebner can't believe the call. And he's arguing, and he better stay in there. He's going to get thrown out of the game. They're coming out to get him away from Stello. This is the second time that Hebner has been called out a second, and he can't believe it. Richie Allen died to his right, fell down from the meeting position, made a whale of a lob throw up towards Boa, and 
the fans don't like the call by Stello. Now, Richie, do me a favor, stay in the game. And to do that, don't throw anything. Tavares gets robbed of a base hit. He should be mad, too. Here comes to Colby. That was a whale of a stop by uh, Richie Allen. Went part of the right diving for the ball. Then while on his knees, lobbed the ball up over the head of the running Hebner. And the ball got there to bow at second. But Hebner thought he was there on time. And they ruled him out. To Colby, ball outside. Now... Hebner's upset, too, because I think he thought he was safe back in the second inning when he ran into second base and knocking in a run there. So he's 0 for 2 tonight, and he's pretty well upset about it as far as decisions of second are concerned. A strike, one ball and one strike. They're playing to call these shallow straight away in the outfield. Here's the pitch. Simpson uh, swinging the foul back. Somebody here in the booth wants me to leave the microphone and come back and autograph a baseball. He forgets that uh, if I do, you aren't going to hear me right. It's amazing. But I'm busy right now. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> Outside, 2-2. Two -two. Ball two, strike two to Kent Picoli. Strike three is called to him. That's the third strikeout. <laughs> oh boy, these hands are some kind of unloading on that poor gentleman in blue out there, but he knew that was going to be happening to him somewhere in his lifetime when he decided he wanted to be an umpire. I tell you the honest truth, I don't think I'd have the thick enough skin to do it. And I gotta give them a lot of credit, those guys. And they're not only honest, that's the first thing about them. And I mean they're honest. Don't you ever question that? They are you gotta be thick skinned to take that whipping from the fans and sometimes from some announcers I know. Some announcers that I know are just terrible with them. I had him here. I'd be looking right at one, I guess. At the end of six innings, Pittsburgh's on top, four to one. Now, I'm sure you all remember Mother Goose and her golden egg. Well, every Thursday night, you can take a gander while that goose lays her golden egg right on the TV. It's the Pennsylvania Lottery's new dollar game, Lucky Lotto. Now, you and Mother Goose and Lady Luck are a team. A team that could win up to $10,000 in free Lucky Lotto tickets while you play along in the privacy of your own home. Every week, five of you lucky devils who win free tickets get to go on the boob tube and win from 2,000 to 5,000 smackers plus 500 a month for life with a minimum $200,000. Now, that's as much as presidents or even basketball players make. So get up off your duff, let your dollar do its stuff, get a Lucky Lotto ticket, and you're in. It's the Pennsylvania Lottery. But you got to play to win. Proceeds benefit senior citizens. Play Lucky Lotta Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Check your local TV listings. Now your host is your crowd-pleasing Ford dealer who has teamed up with the Pittsburgh Pirates for the 75 drive. Kent Tacobi goes to Gary Maddox here now. And the pitch from Kent over the outside corner for a strike. The uh, Red Sox have uh, picked up three runs to lead 4-2 into the bottom of the sixth at New York. In the second period, Oakland leading the Miami Dolphins 14 to nothing in that ball game. Ball one and strike one is the count here on the batter, Gary Maddox. He is uh, in with a run scored. He walked in that fifth inning. The inning we told you that he pointed at Bruce Keeson. Curveball fouled away. Again, I say I'm convinced that Bruce Keeson did not throw at Maddox, but I'm not so darn sure after that when Keeson came up. If there wasn't a little bit of hello and how do you do? Of 
perfect thing close to him. Strike him out. A happy birthday to Gabe, Dave German, who is in our press box. And down goes uh, Maddox. That strikeout comes number three, second for to Colby. Hmm? pitch to the batter Oates. Thank you, Paul Shuley, informing us Bruce Keeson trying to call us, get in touch. Now, maybe Bruce, I don't know, has to go home or something. I don't know, so we'll get Ed Routes on calling. Double check and see if we can uh, find out. We would like to have him on our post game for Nelly. You fans, ball one, strike one. Radio Rich will get through to him. I'm trying to get in touch with Bruce Keeson uh, down in the locker room, Eddie Routsong, and see whether or not uh, he can go on our post-game show. Okay, buddy? Thank you. One ball, one strike. Oatsy the batter. There's a weaker up the right side. It gets by uh, to Colby and stabbing for it. One-handed Stennity can't get it, and uh, Oates has two for three. If you took both of hit, his hits and put them together, it wouldn't blacken my granddaughter Kimmy's eyes. She's only ten. What I'm trying to tell you is that the double he got in the fifth inning and the single he just got here is enough to make you weep. May I quickly add that I think for the Pirates this year, I must have seen 900 like it. Maybe not 900, but boy, I've seen. In that Chicago game, he won 22 to nothing. You, I saw enough to make you go, make anybody want to cry. Tommy Hutton's going to bat here for Wayne Simpson. We had some drillers in that 22 to nothing game, but we had some balls with eyes on it, some humpback liners, some parachutes, some quails, some fluttering ruptures, some every four kind of thing. And that's the kind of hits tonight Mr. Oates has put up there, but I want to tell you something. You take anything you can get, won't you? I don't blame him. I don't blame the Phils for battling it out either, because this has got to be a frustrating thing for this fine ball club. They know when our ball club was struggling, winning only two out of 14 games at that's the time they were at home and could have made their move and didn't make it. Hutton batting at 250 through two, three homers and hits us like he owns us. Strike his call. And I mean hits us like he owns us. Bruce Keeson is the pitcher of record, has gone five innings, allowed just one run. Three hits, struck out one, and walked four. Now Kent Picovi with three saves trying to get this one. Oh, one outside, one one. We just heard from Bruce Keeson, and uh, he is suffering with an upset tummy. Doesn't feel too well, so we won't bother him on the post game show tonight. We'll get we'll talk to Bruce at another time. Ball one, strike one. Outside, ball two. Ball two, strike one here. The look over to first, and Oates is not being held. So Kobe misses outside, three and one. It's only a 4 1 ball game now. We can't horse around. Stodge will come in. General Bend will say a little something here. This guy stroked a home run, a double, and a single off us over there in Philadelphia. Even though we were able to stop it right on him. Ball three, and strike one. He's walked him. That's the fifth walk. Now, I want to tell you something. We're giving him a little too many walks here with only three hits, but that's five walks, and you keep bringing up this thunder and lightning of Cash, Boa, Johnstone, Lazinski, and Allen, and Schmidt, and you're going to get knocked right on your rear end. And we pulled off two double plays so far. 
Five, four, three, five, four, three both times, and they were with two wicked swinging batters up there in Schmidt and Liz and uh, Richie Allen. Now let's see who's warming up. We got a lefty. Looks like it was. There's a pitch low ball one. And the left hander warming up out there for them right now is Tom Hilgendorf. One ball, no strikes. We're warming Dave Justy. Two men on. One out. Fly ball in the gap into the right center, and it's going to get through and going to go all the way, and it's going to knock in at least two runs. I'll tell you now. And any doubt about it, we are not even going to come close to cutting it off. They were going with uh, the ball slammed into the gap, and they're right back into the ball game on an infield single and that walk. Dave Cash drives it home, and does he drive it home? 54 runs batted in for him, and that had to be sweet for David. And uh, here's Boa, There's only one out. Philadelphia doesn't want to have any uh, clubhouse celebrations on the radio at their expense. Now Boa, 0 for 2. Bunts it. And Hebner running up fast. Bare hands throws him out. Great play. He was bunting for a base hit. He's got to be out. No sacrifice, I think. He was a very fine ruling by Bob Smizek. Cash is at third base. Boa is out. Five to three. No sacrifice. He was trying for a base hit. Here's Johnstone, lined to left field twice and walked. Four three, Pittsburgh leading now by one run. With one out, Oates got a dribbling base hit. Hutton drew a walk, and Hutton can fly. I'll tell you something. And when Cash hit the ball into the gap into right center, the got by Oliver had no play on the ball. Hutton was running right up Oates's back. Coming right around to score like it was nothing to it. Now two down to Johnstone. Pitch. Strike, and he's right around like he was going to bunt. Don't ask me why. I don't have any idea why he looked like he was going to bunt. Wish he had a. We're going to see Tom Hilgendorf when we get out of this pickle. And we're in a pickle, let me tell you. 4 3 to score. Pittsburgh with a four. Did he swing? They're going to feel it third. They're going to say no, he did not. Ball, one and one. One ball, one strike to the left hand batting Jay Johnstone. Bouncer to first, Stodgill up beautifully on a great play, got him at first base unassisted. Boy, what a play by Willie Stodgill. Two runs on two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of six and a half, 4-3 Pittsburgh. Ford announces new small high mileage cars. Say, did you know, did you know, there's a new way to go. You can do my staying in peak cheats. 34 miles on a gallon of gas beats most foreign cars you'll see. I didn't know that. The new Pinto and Mustang 2 MPGs rated 34 miles a gallon in EPA Highway Dynamometer Test, 23 in City Test to beat VW Beetle and more. Volvo 242, old book top 99, Fiat 128, Datsun 6, 710, and a lawnmower now and then. Beat all those foreign cars? Beat their EPA Buyer's Guide mileage and a 2.3 liter Four cylinder engine, four speed shift, 3.18 axle ratio, and catalyst are standard. Beat any other? Mazda 808, BWB. See Cliff Heath, Cliff Heath Ford in Upper St. Clair, Jerry Spangler, Spangler Motors in Tyrone, and John Oliverio, Shinston Motor Company in Shinston, West Virginia.
All right, well, uh, Tom Hilgendorf is on, and uh, he's a left-hander, and uh, we're ahead by one run going into the bottom of the seventh. It's four to three, and uh, we'll uh, pause ten seconds for station identification on the Pirates Baseball Network. All the good sports are on Pirates. All right, Tom Hilgendorf is in now to do the hurling. Now, I told you one thing, uh, and it's only a... I mean, Hilgendorf has won seven and lost three. There's nothing uh, remarkable about what I said except one thing. I said, if you keep giving Philadelphia walks, you're going to get hurt. And the five walks to go with the uh, five hits gives them the, the ten men on base. And every time you walk a guy, you take away uh, every chance in the world to get him out. And so it's not easy. Now, they got a, an outfield change also. They put Hutton in the game in right field in place of Johnstone. He remains in the game, and uh, thus uh, Johnstone's spot will be taken care of. Hilgendor is going to bat third. They're going to leave him right in there so they can bat for him to lead off in the eighth. Stennett fouls back. In other words, the pitcher Hilgendorf is batting third. This is one time they want him out of there after this inning to just go with a leadoff man. And they're warming up another left-hander. And uh, they don't even have a number for that guy. Strike two on a foul back. Oh, yes, you do. It's Randy Lurch. All right, we found it. Randy Lurch. Not Barry, but Randy Lurch. A left-hander warming up. By leading Hutton in the ball game and playing out in right field, uh, they get a chance to bat him in the eighth, hopefully the ninth. Stennett awaiting high for a ball, one and two. Underwood, Schuler, Simpson, and now Hilgendorf. Hilgendorf is seven and three on the year. One, two, pitch, swing, foul, and down goes Stennett. It went right off his foot. Ball one and strike two. Here's the one, two, pitch. Hard wrap to third, backhanded beautifully by Mike Schmidt. Throws across, and he throws to Allen, who tags him for the out. Stennett, if he slides, is safe, but he has no way of knowing that that play is going to be uh, pull Allen off any base. It was a real fielding play by Mike Schmidt. Backhanding that ball, it was a hard smash. He grabbed it, the backhanded. And let me tell you something, that was a big play. Here's Sanguino for 0 3. Went out on a comeback to the mound, flying out to right field, and bounced out to third. It's 4-3 Pittsburgh. Here in the seventh inning, one out and none on. Sanguian and Hilgendorf. Bouncer for the hole, for the left side, backhanded by Boa. Leaps up, throws, doesn't get him. Base hit, Sanguian. Boa going deep into the hole, backhanded, leaped in the air, fired, did not get his man. Base hit, and here is Al Oliver. Hit number... Eight for the Buckos. An infield single. Oliver doubled in the gap in left center in the fourth inning. Scored a run. He's one for three. The big inning for Pittsburgh was the fourth, and the single by Parker driving in Zisk. The run by which the Pirates lead is the one that's holding up now. And the Babushkas are flying everywhere, trying to get a rally riding to get the Buckos up where they can do a little more. Big gap off the right side, Sanguin being held by Allen. Cash is over to his right. Gap in the outfield is in the right center slot. Hilgendorf, the left-hander, working. Pitch. Curve, swing, Oliver, strike one. Missed to the mile that time. Shot breaking curve. 
No balls, one strike. The look now to pitch. This curve, a swing and a foul. Strike two. Jogendorf on the 0-2 to Oliver is hit weakly off the left side and again foul. No balls, two strikes. Red Sox leading 4-2 over the Yankees into seven. Curveball popped up, shallow, right up over the mound. Who's going to get it? Allen comes up and grabs it. Richie Allen, two away. It'll bring up Stodgill. He walked, scored a run. He singled a drive in a run and later score a run in that fourth inning. The inning which the Pirates put three across and now lead four to three. Texas and Kansas City playing where Texas leads one nothing in the five and a half. Minnesota is at Oakland. It may be that they'll win the National, the American League West before they even play the game. With Kansas City losing, if they lose it, it's all over. So tonight, it's just a question of perhaps can the Pirates get in to clinch in the same time Oakland clinches? We'll see. Straight away to Stodgill deep. Hilgendorf misses outside. Low ball one. Now they got uh, Gene Garber up, the right-handed knuckleballer. Joe Horner up also. Stodgill drives a base hit in the right center. Sandy in around second will go to third, and the Pirates have runners on the corner. And the battle will be Richie Ziff. Richie's ass popped up to second, hit a screecher out over second uh, into deep center in the fourth inning, and Maddox running back, got a glove on it, could not hold it. Fell for the double, driving in Stodgill. And then Zisk was scored from second base when Parker drilled, drove one right into right field. And his 98th run batted in, and that run now is the run by which the Pirates lead. Here with two out, Stodgill is single tonight, sending Sandy into third. Time is called, and Ray Rimpelmeyer is coming out. And Zisk is going back to the dugout. We may see knuckleballing Gene Garber being called on here. Let's wait and see. Rimpelmeyer, however, is the man that normally does not take him out. Looking into the dugout. Billy Williams says, what do you want to do? And they say they want to change. And they're coming with Garber. Who is their knuckleball pitcher? Gene Garber, former pirate. Garber. Coming on in the seventh inning with two down. Hilgen Dawes has pitched two-thirds of an inning. Has allowed two hits. No strikeouts and no walks. Is responsible for the two men aboard. The pitch of record is still Tom Underwood. But the Phillies are anything but out of this one. And uh, coming in now to do a lot of pitching, Garber. He's won nine and lost 12. Let me tell you something else about him. He's been in 69 ball games, So this is now game 70 for him. He has 14 saves. So he's done a job for him. 
Underwood uh, left after three innings for four runs. Schuler one inning, no runs. Simpson, two innings, no runs. Hilgendorf, two-thirds of an inning. The runners at first and third, his, but no charges yet. And Garber, now we'll go to Sisk. One of the remarkable things about it, when you get a knuckleball, if you hit it right, it's gone a country mile. And Pirate fans would hope that this could be the case here. As it's, this is a game that the Bucks need one out of sight to see if they can't get themselves the victory. Dugout will be coming back. Dave Justy continues to loosen for Pittsburgh. Joe Horner for them, and they put that other left-hander up, uh, Randy Lurch, again. I refuse to say the one it's a very obvious thing that uh, confronts the Philadelphia Phillies. With runners at first and third and two down. Well, what I'm trying to say is they'll use anybody in the house that they got on their roster for this one, the one tomorrow, or any other game until the sun is set in the west. <laughs> but until it sets, and it is far from doing that yet, we're only in the seventh inning of a game delayed 25 minutes due to rain. Uh, the 13,176 here, nobody leaving. San Gian at third base. He beat out an infield single to short. Stodgill wrapped the drive into right center. San Gian going to third. And with two down, Zisk with a double and run battered in waits. Swings a dive base hit. San Gian will score. Charge the run to Hilgendorf. Pittsburgh leads five to three. Sisk has 72, 73 runs driven in now. Out comes Ozark. Parker, the left-hander, is going to look at Joe Horner just as sure as my name is Robert F. Prince. Did they ever tell you what the middle initial F stands for? F like in French. I never did, did I? I'm, what I'm trying to say is I'm running out of things to talk about. I don't know what else. It's this Joe Horner coming in. Mind if I call time and go to the little boys' room and I'll be back while you're listening to the organ music because I'm here by myself and I'm holding on to everything. Joe Horner coming in now. Bill Richards uh, just gave me an idea. I'll tell you what I can talk about. I'll tell you what Nelly and I can talk about. I know Garber leaves now. He went no innings. One hit, no strikeouts, no walks, and he's responsible for Zisk, who's at first base. Stodgill, of course, is at second, is the responsibility of uh, Hilgendorf. And now Horner, the left-hander, is on with two down. Joe Horner here in the uh, last of the seventh with two out. And Horner is 0-0 on the year. Bill tells me that some fan called in on the Let's Talk Sports show to John Signer, or perhaps on Johnny's talk show, and wanted to know how I can call strikes from where I sit. And uh, John said, well, I was up behind the plate and pretty far up. He wanted to know maybe himself how I could call strikes. Uh, and I said, so I can explain, hey, who's down there? We got a real rooter down there. John Fitzpatrick telling us, boy, he's got him going crazy. He's got him going wild down there. Got 
the babushka's ripping. Tiger Fall is going down there. Well, I want to tell you how I can call strike, ladies and gentlemen. In the first place, I'm not blind, and I have, my eyes are trained after 30 years of baseball, like every Major League Baseball announcer. I can see whether a ball is over the plate or not, and I can see whether or not it's high or low with relation to the batter. And here come the Babushkas, and Tiger Fall is waving the Babushkas, and everybody's going wild. Listen to them roar. All over the world, Babushkas. <laughs> okay, Tiger. Now here's the Cobra standing in. This place is enthusiasm, and that again is the you ladies, believe me. You are the ones that did it all with your babushka power. The enthusiasm you've generated is unbelievable. All right, pitch to Parker. Drive base hit to right. Stargill comes in. Here's the throw by Hutton. It's got chance. No, we score. Parker goes to second. He's there. Hit it. Base hit gives him 98 runs driven in on the year. Charge the run to Hilgendorf. Put this to second base, a uh, third base. Uh oh. Now on the throw to the plate, Parker went into second. Hebner's the batter, ball one. That changes the log on Hilgendorf. The Bucks now lead six to three. Here's Hefner, two for three. Corner delivers. Ball outside, two and zero. Oh. Richie Zisk is at third, chargeable to Garber. Parker's at second, chargeable to Horner. Ball two, no strikes. This is all with two out. Two zero pitch. Up inside, ball three. <laughs> Red Sox are running at the Yankees now. Four, five to two at the end of seven and a half innings. Three balls, no strikes to Hebner. Corner into the windup in a 3 0 pitch. Gave him a green light, he fouled it back. Ball three and strike one. I got Shader to crank me up a little bit so I can, uh, thank you, so I can rest my hummer a little. I ain't got that much more left. Hang in there, though. We got to drive. Ball three and strike one. Let me hear that bugle in a moment one more time. Come on, Richie. Remember the charge at Navaclava. 3-1 pitch. Up inside, knocks him down. Ball four. Bases are loaded to the spider. That's the fourth walk. Here's Tavares. Fly to left, bounce into two fourth plays. And the 13,000 people here, ladies and gentlemen, are making more noise than I've heard in I don't know how long a time. So uh, John Fitzpatrick has come up with an idea if we win this that he'll stay here and do the post game show with Joe Ru uh, Russo of Baltimore. Swing foul back. Will give me a chance then to go on down into the locker room and get ready for uh, the deluge that will follow down there. And I asked uh, Jim Russo of Baltimore to be your guest, Johnny, on the uh, thing. No balls and a strike. Thank you. That will give me a chance to get down in. I know I'm going to get soaked, but it will be worth it. Here comes the 0-1. Outside, ball one, strike one. If we can win it. You'll hear Johnny Fitzpatrick then uh, handling everything up here with uh, Jim Russo, one of the great scouts in all of baseball, Baltimore. And their team is not out of it yet. 1-1. One, one. Swing. Swing. 
But I will say one thing. It's hurting now because the Red Sox are running at them, too. Oakland has not yet started, but Texas is beating Kansas City. At the end of seven innings, one to nothing. If Texas wins it, it's all over. Oakland will win. And we can win here as the Buckos go at it. Let's go, Buck. Listen to him roar. One ball, two strikes, bases loaded. A couple of runs in the pitch. And a drive into shallow center. Maddox comes up. He's got it. That was the fly ball into shallow center field. But the Pirates get two very, very big runs on one, two, three, four base hits. No errors. And three left. Listen to the roar of the crowd. Greeting their Pirates. A very big one as we have gone through seven innings. The Pirates lead now six to three. Nellie King. Nothing really serious with Nellie, but he's got the doggone bug at the wrong time for the flu for him and the fever. And it's best for him to remain home and relax and get well. And so uh, Greg Luzinski and Tukovi works a strike to him. Here's uh, one ball, one strike. There's a base hit up the middle. Luzinski's three for three. Dick Allen standing in, 0 for 3. Been out on the front end of a double play and out on the back end of a double play. Both of them were involved in the 5-4-3 executions. Tukovi works to him. Swing! He tried to hammer it out of here. And if he does, it's 6-5 to five in a hurry. What a fearful looking swing. Dave Justy is now up for Pittsburgh. This game is not over, folks. Luzinski with his third hit. He's battling it every way you can go at you. Dave Cash with a big blasting double in the seventh inning, pulling the Phillies to within one. The Pirates striking back, getting a lucky infield hit, and they did. Swing, strike two. And then after that with two out, Stodgill wrapping, Zisk wrapping, and Parker going at it. And they came up with two very big runs with two out. The ability to score a couple of runs with two men out was a very big factor. Nothing in two. I'll remind you again, in the event we're able to win this game, John Fitzpatrick will be on for a few moments with Jim Russo, who's a very excellent scout of the Baltimore Orioles. Here's the look. The 0-2. Stuck him out, swing. Richie Allen going down. That'll bring up Mike Schmidt. He uh, stuck out, bounced in and around the horn double play, and struck out. He has 38 home runs. There's a bunt by Mike Schmidt that bounced all the way straight back. And I wish he'd bunt about two more like it. Nothing in one the count. Mike Schmidt. Luzinski at first, loose hold on him by Willie Starge. Here's the look now in the 0-1. Now swing and a miss, and Tacovi fired a BB by him. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you might, some of you wonder why we wouldn't be picking, say, a Tacovi, a Keeson, and what have you for our post-game show. There's a reason for that. You're going to get to hear all of them 
in our locker room if we win. And you'll get an analysis of what we are faced with if we win by one of the game super sleuths and Jim Russo of the Baltimore Club. So we'll give it the, both, the best of both worlds. Stay with us. Fly ball hooking down the left line, and it's going to be a foul ball into the corner and just barely foul. Mike Schmidt missed the double by a Nats eyelash. Pirates leading by the score of six to three. And let me tell you, the two runs, the Buckos came back to score in the seventh inning. Mighty big runs. Bruce Keeson, the pitcher of record, if he can hang it in here with Tacoli, and the cheek is pumping him. I'll tell you that. There's a pitch low. However, he did give up two runs in the seventh inning. Remember, he struck out about it, and Oates got an infield single. He walked Hutton, and then Cash lit him up for a double. Now the Bucks should come right back to give him that two-run margin again. But Mike Schmidt is up there, a ball and two strikes. Lazinski at first base, one away, and here's the one-two pitch. Foul tip, fouled at the feet of the plate umpire, a ball and two strikes. Rain continues to drop very slightly, just sort of a drizzle. I've often wondered why it is that people question why you can't call a ball or a ball a strike or a ball from being up 300 feet away. You're right back at the home plate. And you tell me I can't see a ball come over the plate. I can tell whether it's high with relation to uh, pitches you can't tell as too much as a sinker. You can tell a breaking ball or a changeup or a fastball slide at one two pitch. There's a breaking ball and just missed outside, 2-2. Two, two. Did you ever wonder how a cocktail waitress or a waiter can come up to a table of 15 people and take a drink order and a food order and walk back and turn around and come back and lay it all right down in front of you the way you ordered it? Because they're trained, that's why. Fly ball, shallow right. Stand it back. It's a tough play. Stand it there. He got it close to first base. No, Lozinski is just back. Stand it made a fine play in shallow right turn and whipped the strike to Stodger, but Lozinski got back. Maddox rounded the short, walked and scored, struck out. That's leading six to three. We are in the top half of the eighth inning. Maddox, a right hand batter. Tacovey checks his runner. Pitches. Fly ball out into right center. Running hard. Oliver slicing on him. He got it. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. Six to three, Pittsburgh. See John Haldeman, Forest Hills Motor Company in Forest Hills, Ed George, Jacob George Ford in Houtsdale, and Maynard Dilley, Marlinton Motor Sales in Marlinton. Your baseball host has been your crowd-pleasing Ford dealer who has teamed up with the Pittsburgh Pirates for the 75 drive. got a new pitcher in John Montague. Tiger Fall is trying to drink it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh man up is John Montague. That is on the hill. Mind you again now, the best way to get your tickets for the playoff series is come down here, go to Ticketron or over at G.C. Murphy. Uh, really, it is the best way. You can get all you want of every seat but the box seats. In person, you're going to get four of the box. You get plenty of reserves, the general missions, and the youth ticket. And I would suggest that you do exactly that. Now, because this is going to be quite a series, games three, 
four, and if necessary, number five, two of them at night, and the other in the afternoon, first two at night. Garber uh, didn't appear in any, he gave up one hit is all, but no runs. And Joe Horner gave up uh, in one third of an inning. No runs, uh, one hit, no strikeouts, and one walk. And now Montague, a right-hander, goes to Tacovi. Pirates leading six to three. Montague has uh, one none lost one. We're in the last half of the eighth inning. He is the seventh man up. We have a one ball, one strike count to Picoli, who struck out back in the sixth. He's trying to save this game for the Buckos and for Keeson. He did give up a couple of runs, but the Pirates came right back to get him a pair. The Yankees get back with a run, and at the end of eight innings of play, Boston leading there five to three, where their magic number is five. If they win, it will be four, because Baltimore is idle. Kansas City is losing to Texas one nothing. If Kansas City loses, it's all over. Oakland has clinched the American League West before they even start to play, and they got 20 more minutes yet before they play their game. That inside ball three. If we can clinch here, it will be our fifth National League Eastern title in six years. Tacoby goes down swinging. And the only other one that we missed on was when we were knocked out of the box the day after the season ended when San Diego came back and zapped us. The earliest we ever clinched a title was on the 21st of September. Well, this is the 22nd. And this is game number 156. We clinched uh, with game number 144 back in 72. But we uh, didn't play as many double headers and all. That's one of the reasons why. One ball, no strikes. See so who's done it. Slime the foul right out of play. So we got everything lined up for you now and how it's going to happen and you, we hope you'll stay aboard and listen to it. Strike two. Johnny Fitzpatrick. And one of the things that he and uh, Jim Russo of the Baltimore Club are going to talk about is that uh, a lot of the boo-boos that have happened as a result of scouting. Misplays in baseball. Foul back. Like a famous one that occurred with Dick Grote and Bill Verdon as a result of a scouting report by Mayo Smith. And those are another thing. And Jim, of course, has got into the Cincinnati club. He'll tell us what our problems are there. Stenet, 0 for 3. Bouncing down to second, bobbled by Dave Cash. Keeps it in front of him and throws for the out, two away. Pittsburgh leading 6-3 in the eighth, two down to San Guillen. on the outside corner. Down outside this time from Montague. Seventh pitcher of the night. Underwood, we back. Went three innings for four runs and is the pitcher record. This one almost picked up uh, Sangi. Ball two strike one. That was a roaring fastball. Just took off up inside. End of eight innings now. Boston leading the Yankees 5-3. The magic number if they win will be four. Baltimore is idle. Texas is winning one nothing at, uh, over Kansas City. If they win, Oakland doesn't need them to worry about it, and they don't have to worry anyhow. Montague misses. Because Oakland is playing 
Later on with Minnesota, they haven't even gotten underway. We're into the bottom of the eighth. Kansas City still trailing nothing to one. Ball, three and two to Sanger. Well, I guess you know that if we win the National League East, we will broadcast the championship series starting in Cincinnati. Uh, two weeks from yesterday. There's ball four. Well, they just made an announcement that keeps me from going into the clubhouse. I've got to have an identification card, and I don't have my baseball pass with me. I can understand that admission to the clubhouse will be by card only. Baseball writer's card. Or a pass from the National League, which I have. And I don't have mine with me. But I hope that maybe they'll let the old gunner get in. I'll bring a microphone. Wouldn't it be funny if they kept me out? They'd be entitled to. And now Mr. Oliver's up there. He has a double in four at bats. Uh, scored a run in the fourth inning. Pittsburgh leading six to three here in the eighth inning in the game that can clinch it if we can win it. Low. Pirates uh, got a run in the second inning when Stodgio walked, and two outs later, Hebner got a base hit to drive him home. And then we added three more in the fourth. Oliver doubled, single Stodgio, doubles this, single Parker, and that made it four runs for us. The ball all the way to the backstop. Five. They got a run in the fifth inning when Maddox walked. Oates got a bloop single, or a bloop double, and McCarver bounced out to first base, scoring Maddox. And then they came with two more in the seventh. Foul back. With one out, Oates got an infield single. Hutton drew a walk. Dave Cash found a shot into the gap in the right center for two runs. And that made it 4-3 Philadelphia, trailing by one. But the Pirates came right back in the seventh inning. Hilgendorf pitching one out. Sanguian got a lucky infield hit. Oliver drives to left. He's got a base hit. Sanguian going to second base will hold. And with one out, as I say, in the seventh, Sanguian got a lucky hit to the infield. And then with two out, Stodgill single. They brought in Gene Garber. He hit the first pitch for a single to drive in Sanguian. They brought in Horner. He hit a single off. Parker hit a single off him to drive in Stodgill. Those two runs were very big. Now here's Willie the Starch. There's a two out. We have runners at first and second. Stodgill walked and scored. Single to drive and run and scored. Walked and singled and scored. Stodgill has uh, three runs scored and one run driven in. And Montague, the right-handed working. The pitch. Swing foul, left side, no play. Coming up into the booth, and just about killed Nellie King's partner, the organ player. Reed James, he almost hit him right on the head and bounced right in behind him. And Liz Kazanovich's son got it. No balls, two strikes. Pitch. Broken back, ball down the right field line, fair ball drops in for a blue double. Going to score one run. Oliver's going to be held as Stodgill breaks his back, gets a bloop double down the right field line. The bell of the bat went down the right field line partway. The bat handle stayed at home plate. Pagan is going out to get the bell of the bat in short right field. The ball blooped beyond that into right field down the line, and the Buckos have really got the ball. A cloud of charge going. Brother. Here's this. Bob 
buckles are diving for the flag in 70. The boat. Mm. driven in now for Richie's head. And the batter will be Parker. Babushka powers on the board. Babushka's flying everywhere. Time is called. They're going to take Zisk out and put in Miguel Delaney to run for him. Big hand, Richie's head. And the Cobra stands in with 99 runs driven in. Would he like to finish this year with 100 ribbies or more? And that he'll do. Delaunay runs for Richie Sisk. The Pirates lead 9-3 to three as they bang through for three runs. And again, two are out here in the eighth. Lined a foul to left by uh, the Cobra. He has two hits, both singles in the fourth and again the seventh. And two runs driven in. Zisk now has 75 ribbies. Stodgill 90. Parker 99. There's a the ball hit deep to right field. Going back. Kissing goodbye. again is on the board. Holy Toledo. Now he has 101 runs driven in. 25 homers. Pirates lead 11 of 3. They are destroying the National League here. Two out in the seventh inning they score a pair. Two out in the eighth inning they score five. Hebner, two for three, the batter. Ball two and no strikes to him, and Montague being ripped in here. Swings, and he fouls to the left and out of play. What an awesome bit of power as Parker drove it deep over the right field stanchion. For his 25th homer. And his fourth run driven in on the night gives him 101 runs battered in for the season. The first to get up into the 100 run battered in mark. Fly ball, shallow left, running hard. Schmidt coming on, Luzinski, and Schmidt makes a great over the shoulder catch deep down the line in foul territory to retire the side. Listen to the roar as the Pirates take the field. Listen to this. deserve every bit of it. The Pirates, five runs, four hits, no errors, none left. We go to the top of the ninth, and the Pirates three outs away from the National League Eastern Championship to score 11-3. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is another big one for the Buckos. They are three outs away from saying to you what they've been saying for the last five years. They are one of the greatest teams in the National League. A strike is thrown by Jacoby to Oates, who's two for three. The Pirates won the National League East in 1970, 71, 72, 74. Were eliminated in 73. 
the day after the season was over and we'll win the National League Eastern title here tonight barring the absolute unforgettable would be unforgettable for me a nightmarish ninth inning that fills to do anything without the score nine runs and if they do I'll be long gone and you'll have to hear about it in tomorrow's bogus show because I wouldn't stay around by myself to face a nine run assault by the Phillies I'd quit strike on a foul back one and two I'll tell you one thing and don't ever underlook it the Philadelphia overlook it Philadelphia Phillies Ball two, strike two. And the pitch. Bounced off the left side. Up comes Tavares. He throws. One out. Don't ever overlook the fact that the Philadelphia Phillies did not have Steve Carlton at his best for a long time with a bad arm. Don't overlook that Gary Maddox wasn't hurt for a long time. Don't overlook that. Remember, they didn't have Richie Allen the full year. And they have a team that is just that close. And there's a bouncer to first. It's foul at the last moment. This is Hutton, who walked and scored in the seventh inning, remain in the game. Philadelphia has shown that they are a ball club that just will be back, and that's just tooth and nail next year. Boston leading now into the bottom of the ninth at New York, six to three. Their number goes to four if they beat the Yankees. Baltimore is idle. Here's the 0-1 outside. Texas is playing Kansas City. And in that ball game, into the bottom of the eighth inning, Texas leads one to nothing. If Texas wins the game, it's all over. Oakland will win the American League West without even starting to play. There's a ball popped up off the first base side foul. I think it will get up in the seats. It does. Bain goes for Minnesota. Holtzman starting for Oakland. They're about 10 minutes away from starting. And it's merely academic if Texas wins it. It's academic anyhow. Here, leading 11 to 3, one out as Hutton, who's a tough batter, standing in. One ball, two strike pitch from Tacovi. Bounced off the left side. Tavares comes up. Strong throw. He's out. Now it's up to Dave Cash to keep it alive for the fading Phillies. Dave bounced the second, fly to center, got it short, hit a very big double in the seventh inning when it drove the Pirates. Right up against the wall, knocked in two runs to make it 4-3. Pittsburgh by one run at that point. The fire tower came roaring right back with two runs in the seventh and five in the eighth, and they won it. He, uh, at that point, put him up there 11-3. Pitch to Cash. Spike is called. And the fans now on the edge of the seats are roaring and going wild. No balls. One strike. The Colby reading the sign from Manny Sanguin. The Bucks after their fifth title in six years. The pitch, check swing foul, right side, strike two. And a scramble for that souvenir of a baseball of the ball game that'll wrap it up for the Buckos in 1975. Two weeks of looking around and then the head-on collision and the shootout of all time. Cincinnati and the Pittsburgh Pirates games one and two there. Games three, four, and five if necessary here. You better be getting your tickets. No balls, two strikes to cash. Two down, none on, ninth inning, Pittsburgh 11, Philadelphia 3. The pitch, bouncing down to Hebner, backs up, got the ball, he throws. The Bucks are the title. No, Stodgio drops the ball. They live it yet. And I called it prematurely. The throw was low, and Hebner is drawing an error. And that'll bring up Larry Boa. He went out on a comeback into the mound. He walked, he bounced a short, and he bounced a third. 
So you see, I started to tell you the Bucks are the champions of the National League East, and bingo, they're not there yet. That's the first time I've seen a throw by Richie go low. He normally never makes an error on the throw, and I think maybe just by winning the game, swing and a miss. In his mind, it's all over, but I'm sure that it is. No balls, one strike. Pitch. There's a ball punched out into shallow left. Coming up for it is Robinson. He can't get it. It drops in. And stepping on at second base is Cash. So they got two men aboard. Boa gets a single. Robinson, of course, playing out in left field. And now we have... Uh, who coming up? It looks to me like it's Mike uh, Rogozinski. It is. <laughs> Left hand batting Mike Rogozinski. Foul ball. No balls, one strike, two men aboard, and the pitch. Inside for a ball. Pittsburgh leading 11 to 3. The Phillies here, as a result of an error, have uh, life yet. One ball, one strike. Rock hang in there. One and one the pitch. Strike called. One ball, two strike now. Here we go on the one two pitch. Fly ball, deep right for you. Back goes Parker. We are the champions of the National League East. Oh, that is the situation. The Buckos have won it. The Buckos have won the National League Championship. And so we have come up with it at the right time. So let's just tell you the Buckos win it 11 to 3. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The Buckos have won the ball game and have won the National League Eastern Championship. And John Fitzpatrick will be along soon to talk with Jim Russo, one of the great scouts in all of baseball, to talk about the problems now confronting Pittsburgh. Those problems are meeting the Cincinnati Reds because that is not an easy task. But they have earned that much of the right, and we'll tell you about this one quickly. Underwood, Schuler, Simpson, Hilgendorf, Garber, Horner, and Montague. The winner will be for us, Keeson. The Tecovi will get the save. And Underwood will be the loser. He's 14 and 13. Parker's home in the eighth, one on 25. 101 runs driven in. So the Pirates have won this ball game by the score of 11 to 3. All right, back at Three River Stadium here where the Pirates have won the Eastern Division Championship once more by beating the Philadelphia Phillies 11-3. And they go into the playoffs against the Cincinnati Reds. Our guest tonight, Jim Russo, Super Scout for the Baltimore Orioles. Nice to have you with us, Jim. What are your thoughts about the game tonight? Well, John, it was a very impressive uh, performance by the Pirates. Nothing unusual, however. We know they can hit the ball. Uh, 
I uh, was particularly impressed by two things tonight. Uh, and incidentally, congratulations. It was a fine effort. And uh, I wish we were in the same uh, boat. But uh, two things that impressed me tonight was the way your left-hand hitters touched up a very good left-hand pitcher in Tom Underwood. And uh, in view of the fact that Cincinnati is uh, putting a lot of hopes in uh, Don Gullett, I would have to say that it was very impressive tonight the way your left-hand hitters uh, were handling uh, a pretty darn good left-hand pitcher in Tom Underwood. And secondly, I thought Tukelvi came in and did a marvelous job, and uh, that certainly has to uh, speak well of uh, the Pirate bullpen for the coming uh, playoffs. Well, Tukelvi's done a good job for us all year long, or ever since he's been called up from Charleston, West Virginia ball club, Jim. Jim, speaking about the Orioles, how about their chances of catching the Red Sox? Huh? I would have to say that they're, uh, to be very honest with you, John, I think they're rather remote. Um, we're uh, three and a half games out, and of course we didn't play tonight. Uh, we had an off night, and uh, uh, Boston is in the process of uh, defeating the New York Yankees, so they'll gain a half a game, which uh, might make it around four games as we go into the uh, final seven games uh, of the season. So it's it's a uh, it's a tough task. Uh, our backs are up against the wall, but uh, we're playing very good baseball. Boston just won't give up. Uh -huh.